Welcome guys to video 2 of this series of 10 videos. I will show you how to set up the database and connect to it with a PHP file. If you have not seen the previous video, go to the description down this video here and click on the link there so you can see it. Let's get to the code. I already have Visual Studio code from the previous video. And if we go to the browser again, we can go to localhost forward slash php my admin. And over here we'll see the databases that we have in the system. So let's click on databases and I'm going to create a database for this system that's called company. So create the company database and over here select the collation type to be UTF MB4 Unicode CI. This CI means case insensitive and if you select UTF UTA MB4 Unicode you can actually store any characters that you can imagine including emojis. So this is basically the standard today. So we create the company and over here we're going to create the users table. This is not a course in database normalization, so we'll keep it as light as possible. <clears throat> Our user will have the columns for the ID, the name, and the image. So this will do. I will click on go. The ID column is going to be auto incremented. It has to go from one to two and so on. It cannot be repeated. It has to be a number. It cannot be a negative number. So you could set up this manually, but MariaDB, that's the database I'm using, you can think of it as MySQL, has this serial type, which is, as you can see there in the tooltip, it's a begin, it's unsigned, not null, auto increment and unique. So that's what we need. We don't touch. We just we don't touch anything else, just that. We need the name for the image, and that's going to be a bar char. The length of it, let's give it 20 characters. I think that will do. And let's create the picture path, the image path. So if I just write picture here, most people will think that I'm going to store an image in this field, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to store the path to the image. So how about if we just call it picture name? So the name of the picture will be a.png or b.jpg and so on. This is text, and we will say that the path to the image is going to be 100 characters long. Now we can go and click on save, or you can also do control enter, or oh, not in this part of the system. Sorry guys for that. So we just say save. Let's fill it up with a little bit of data. Why not? Let's go and insert some elements. I'm going to say that the name is A, and the picture name is A.png, that's the path. And for here we'll do b and b.png. I'm just hard coding these values. The path to the image, it's going to be more complex than this, but it doesn't matter because that will be hard coded in the system. So imagine that you have a folder called pictures. You don't need to store pictures a.png and pictures b.png because that's redundant. This pictures path will be saved or will be stored in the PHP code. Now we're going to save this, all of these elements, by clicking on Go, and we have some data in the database. So that's the setup for it for now. And we're going to go to the second part, which is connecting to the database. So go to VS Code, and we're going to create a file here called database.php. We're going to set the PHP tags and some lines of code there, they are empty for now. So now you have to understand the following. If you have this database.php and we just echo database, now anybody can connect to this file from anywhere. So if I go to Postman, for example, and then I create a route where I say localhost, I will go to back and then I will go to database.php we will get the word database. And this is something that you do not want because the connection to the database should not be a file that anybody can just access. 
The idea is that this file, the database file, should be accessible by any of the routes, in this case, this one, or that one, or that one, but it should not be accessible from a URL. So we're going to protect that. Let's create inside the back a new folder. Let's call it protected. And let's move the database inside the protected folder. I just drag and drop it. Now, this is not doing anything, just changing the path. So if I go to protected, all the slash database, you still see the database. So just because you call a folder protected doesn't mean that it protects this file or the access to the file. So what we have to do is inside the protected folder, I'm going to create a new file. I will call it .htaccess. Remember the dot at the beginning of it, it's vital. And this htaccess file will contain the following three words, denied from all. We save it. And now we go to Postman and we hit the route and it says that this is protected. You can see that the access is forbidden. We don't care to display a JSON response to this route because if somebody is accessing this, it's because they know what they are trying to do. So just leave it as it is. We don't care about the bad man or hacker trying to reach our database connection via this way. So that's what the HT access does. It just blocks this folder, the protected folder, from being accessed from any URL and only the protected folder. So the HT access is local to the folder where you have saved it. We can close it and now we're going to connect to the database. The connection to the database is a little bit tricky. It's something that you should not try to memorize, but Use this file as, you, as your blueprint for any other connection to any database that you have in the future. So we're going to do a try catch statement here. And since we're going to be doing PDO, and this is coming from video two, just in case that I show this in a later future video. So I'm going to have a PDO exception if I get something wrong happening here and the exception will just say that um, yeah sure we are going to actually display not if you access this file directly from the url but if you open the file from any of these routes the route should display a message to the user saying that something went wrong so if we are playing with this echoes sending json strings back to the user we're going to send this status status of zero meaning that something went wrong we're going to send a message cannot connect to db that will do and i'm going to show you a trick that i usually use i always throw here a line number let me just break this into line so you can see the object here which is not an object it's just text but the browser will understand it as an object and the last element will be a i will invent here a debug element which in reality i want the line number in which this error happened i call it debug you could call it line but it's better just to call it debug so if somebody or if you see this debug you know that's the line number that we're referring to so this could be one, in this case that will be line number nine. So what we do is we just concatenate between single code dot dot single code. And then in here we throw this line variable. That's an underscore, underscore, line capitalized, underscore, underscore. So we save it. And if we have an issue connecting to the database, we will actually get this message out. If something goes wrong, always remember that this is a catch. Something went really bad in your system, so you can just exit this script. The whole system will just die there. You can also call this die if you want. So now let's go and let's start creating the connection strings to the database. So here we need a DB username. 
and by default you will be connected as root you also need a password i will call it db password for now it's empty depending on the system maybe in your computer this is root root in my computer it is empty and we need a database connection string so we're going to say the database connection and this is a little bit tricky so here we have to write the protocol which is mysql colon the host that will be localhost that's where our database is located if your database is located in a different server so here you can put the ip address of the server we also need to do the db name that will be the database name that we call it company and we need to set up the character set which will be utf utf8 if you don't do this and then you have some special characters danish characters spanish characters you may get into issues so let's get, let's get used to doing that so this is the connection string we also need some options and this is an array of options i will walk you through this it's very important that you know what they do so we'll have a pdo and then i will have an attribute for the error mode i will explain what this is doing in a second and this just points to pdo and the error mode that will be the error mode and that will be the exception so we get exceptions out of this system if something goes wrong and the next attribute that I always use is the ATTR default fetch mode. And this is really important because I will tell you what it does actually. And that will be fetch associative. It ends with that. Okay. So this is the setup. This here allows me to use try catches. So basically I can do a try catch surrounding every SQL statement. And this here allows me to get not JSON, but let me write JSON here because what we will get out from the database is an associative array, which we can convert to JSON and make it JSON valid. If you do not use this line of code, you will get the following. You will get an array with positioning of zero, one, and two. And internally you will have positions for each element position one sorry zero one and so on so you cannot use this as json because everything will be position based but if you do this as a fetch associative what you will get out of it is yeah true you will get an associative array but when you convert this to json by doing json in code then this element here will automatically be converted to a json object and so will every other element. So this line here, in my scenario for the API, is vital. Now we're going to connect to the database. So we're going to create a DB variable, and this is going to be a PDO connection. And this PDO takes several arguments. The first argument will be the DB connection string. That's the connection string. We will need the username for the database. We will need the password. I'm running out of space here, so let me break this into lines. The connection string, the username, the password, and we will also need to pass here the options. You can call these variables whatever you guys like. So that will be the connection to the database. And when we use this file in any of our routes, we will actually get this variable and we can use it let's save it and now we cannot really test it because i have just protected it so when i do this i cannot test this route i will take this protection away for a second i could delete this deny from all or you can also put just a comment like so save it and we don't get anything out of it and that's fine because if you look at the code here we try to connect we actually do connect and we never get inside the exception. So now I'm going to trigger the exception manually. I'm going to point to a database with a different username, X. Then you get this out. 
This is not JSON, even though it looks like JSON, because we don't have the headers that I showed you in the previous video set up here. But you will see how this gets connected to the API. So that's how you trigger the connection. If you have localhost X, which doesn't exist, we trigger the error while it's trying to connect. It will never happen. So that's why we're stuck here. So now let's connect to localhost again and we are set up. So we don't need this route because it's not really an API route. We can just delete it. We don't save it. We don't care about it. The database is working. The connection is working fine. So now we need to go to the HT access and we take the deny from all away. We save, <clears throat> we save, and we are going to get all the users. So let's connect with this API, the get users API. Let me put this to the left. And over here, we say that we're going to send JSON if something goes wrong, and this is everything that went fine. So the first connection is going to happen via the require once. Require once will allow us to connect to the database, and in this case, only one time. So from this directory, the one that this file is at the moment, which is this file, I would like to go to the protected folder and fetch the database file. So dir followed by, we're going to go to the protected folder and we're going to get the database.php file. We save it. And basically what this line is doing, it points to this file, it grabs all this code, and it replaces this line with that code. That's what you can think of when you do a require once or include or include once or require once. So that's what it's doing. We save. Now we need to test this API, the get user API. So I move to Postman. Let me make sure I'm the right API. Get users, plural. Open it. And then I just connect to it. I did control enter. I don't see any mistakes. Everything is working fine. This is just hard coded. So if I make a mistake here, I connect to the database that does not exist. Actually, the username that does not exist. This is what I get out. And now this is valid JSON. You can see that I get the state to zero and I'll connect to the database. And this is coming from line number 20. But line number 20 is in this file, the database file. Here. So you have to know the structure of your system. So this here is coming from video two, just in case that you're watching this at a later point and you don't know why I was using this line, you can always go to that video. Let me check the documentation for this part here. So connecting to the database, sure, I'm connected to the database, but now we need to connect to the database with every other route. So I take this, I copy, and then I'm going to open all my routes so I can include that line. Create, delete, get, get, and update. You could do this in a more efficient way by having a global file or something like that, but I don't like doing that stuff. Afterwards, it gets too tricky to maintain that. So creating a user, I connect to the database, deleting the user, connect to the database, the same happens with the get user. Get users is already set up and update the user is already set up. Let's test each of these routes. Open, 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 open. I didn't open all of them, so I just do one at a time. Get the user working. Get users working. Delete the user working. Great and update. So if I break the database, it will break all these routes. Okay, guys, please don't forget to subscribe, like the video, get notifications, and I'm preparing the next one for now, which will be how to do the backend, getting all the users. Thank you for watching.